What is going on, man? We are back with another video. This is from Alex Bell, man. Avatar The Last Airbender Cabbage Theory, man. You know what I'm saying? I like cabbage. That's about it. Cabbage with ketchup be busted. No cap, but I don't know nothing about Avatar. I don't know about who the cabbage man is or nothing. Okay? So run me them lights, okay? Water. Okay, here we go. Earth. Fire. Now get it. Let me make sure this the turned up all the way. The from Avatar The Last Airbender is a Fire Nation spy, and Ooh. I believe he is the true villain of Avatar, secretly orchestrating the events of both shows. And also, I think- Dang, so Buddy is a snitch? Okay, we- bending. But, but we'll get to that part later. We're about now, to see this. I know that sounds crazy, but I promise you, this will be the most convincing Avatar theory you will ever hear. Okay. This is Cabbage. Theory. Yeah, Alex Bell, he don't miss, though. I ain't gonna lie with theories. This nigga don't miss. Okay. So, Avatar The Last Airbender. I'm guessing most people who clicked on this video have already seen it, but on the off chance you haven't, it's basically a show where some people can control one of the four elements. And the Avatar, the only person who can master all four elements, has to stop the Fire Nation from taking over the world. But okay. why would I possibly think that a random Earth Kingdom cabbage merchant is actually a Fire Nation spy? And a cabbage bender, but we'll get to that later. You know, okay. he's just a funny running gag character. All we ever see him do is get his cabbages destroyed. My cabbages! My cabbages! <laughs> My cabbages! My cabbages! <laughs> well, Bro, you gotta sell more than cabbages. We are told many times throughout the show that there are Fire Nation spies. He was probably trying to signal the Fire Navy. Oh yeah, I'm sure he's a spy for the Fire okay. Navy. Okay. How do we know you're not Fire Nation spies? Jet, he's just an old man. He's Fire Nation. He was sent to eliminate me. But strangely, we never actually see any of them. But at the same time, we know there must be spies out there because someone okay. is giving Zuko very detailed information about the gang's whereabouts. We're closing in on the Avatar's trail. There have been multiple sightings of the mm. Avatar. Somehow Prince Zuko and the Fire Nation keep finding us. And let me ask you this. Who does the gang constantly run into throughout the entire show? Oh boy! The Cabbage Merchant. Okay, Why is he getting it locked like up stretch, right there? But though. don't worry, we're just getting started. Nah, that picture kind of looks sus. I ain't gonna count. Bruh, it's all in the booty. You know what I'm saying? Just all in the booty. The face is all in the booty. You know what I'm saying? In book Let's three, go. the gang goes to see a Fire Nation play all about their adventures. Okay. You guys are not gonna believe this. Put Here's a shirt on, nigga. <laughs> silly here to spread joy and fun it's basically just fire nation propaganda where the fire lord is shown as the good guy and wins in the end the world is mine <laughs> Y'all don't sit y'all now. The plot of the play is surprisingly accurate. Riddles and challenges must you face. No, Jet, what do they do to you? Must destroy. What? How's so it accurate? Where did they get all of this information about the gang? His sources include singing nomads, pirates, prisoners of war, and a surprisingly knowledgeable merchant of cabbage. Mm. A surprisingly knowledgeable merchant of oh, cabbage. Huh. He a snitch. Why did the cabbage merchant, an Earth Kingdom citizen, help them write Fire Nation propaganda? Because he's actually a Fire Nation spy. Mm. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Maybe I'm just overthinking this. Maybe he didn't necessarily know he was helping the Fire Nation. For all we know, someone just asked him about the Avatar, and he was more than willing to complain about the guy who has destroyed his cabbages many times. Yo. You I know, can see. He might be a little petty, but there's no reason to think he's secretly trying to take down the Earth Kingdom. Facts. Right? Right. 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 Ah, oh, man. Right. In book two, the cabbage merchant tries to take the ferry to Ba Sing Se, but he gets rejected by the ticket lady. I told you already. Okay. No vegetables on the ferry. One she got a foam on her head. The entire ecosystem of ba Sing what is Se. that? Security. Ah! Why that look like a foam? Ah, my cabbage. Dang. She 
destroys his cabbages to Why avoid risking cabbage slugs from getting into the city. Now, this may seem like a bit of an okay. overreaction, but Ba Sing Se is a closed off, self contained ecosystem. If the wrong pest got in, it could quickly spread and be devastating for the city's agriculture and economy. And you know what's just some cabbage, bro? What the bit? There's like COVID or something? Like, I don't get that. Crazy about all this? She was right. She was right about the cabbage? If you look really closely as the cabbage cart gets destroyed, you can just barely see a cabbage slug flying through Ooh. the air. One cabbage slug could destroy the entire ecosystem of Dang. Boston. Listen to what the lady says. A single cabbage slug would destroy the entire yeah, ecosystem. Yeah, one slug? Dang! System of Ba Sing Se. If the cabbage merchant actually got into Ba Sing Se like he wanted, he would have personally been responsible for the downfall of the capital of the Earth Kingdom. <laughs> okay, okay, that's that's not like a All great right. look for the cabbage man. That's but, tough, you know, right maybe, there. Maybe it was just an accident. No, no, I refuse to accept that. Look at this guy. He is so passionate and obsessed with his cabbages. Off with their heads! One for each head of cabbage! Literally, his only defining trait is how much he cares about his cabbages. Hey, I might not want cabbage after this. Does this really seem like the type of guy who wouldn't know if he had cabbage slugs? He's a Fire Nation spy! But mm. why? I mean, he clearly has a vendetta against Aang, but why would he be intentionally trying to take down the Earth Kingdom? Well, Aang is not the only one who destroys his cabbages. We've seen him try to enter both Omashu and Ba Sing Se, and both times, Earth Kingdom bureaucrats destroyed his cabbages. What kind of slum do you think this is? <laughs> Oh Security. my god! Oh. Bro, they destroyed the a whole car. we actually know about. For all we know, this is a regular occurrence for him. <laughs> and then, he's forced to watch as they immediately let Aang, his mortal enemy, inside directly after him. My cabbages! Enjoy your mushroom. We will. I can see why he is snitched now. It is my pleasure to help. All right, we scammed that lady good. He didn't even have a ticket to get into Bossing Se. What the hell? And when Aang does destroy his cabbages and he tries to get justice, you're gonna pay for this. Off with their heads. One for each head of cabbage. Guess what the Earth Kingdom authorities do to Aang? What is your judgment, sire? Throw them <gasps> a feast. <gasps> throw them a they feast. <laughs> The Bro, they look at that pig right there, dog. Much. You know what I'm saying? They got the pig and everything on there. Do y'all eat pig feet, bro? If you do, you're nasty, bro. You're nasty. But hey, I'm eating up everything else, though. That fish and everything look good, don't mind. Hey, Guys, the no cabbage cow. merchant has just as much reason to hate the Earth Kingdom. And I think the years of abuse and special treatment for the Avatar radicalized him into becoming a Fire Nation spy, attempting to take down the Earth Kingdom from within using infested cabbages. And you know what? I don't even think this was his only attempt to do this. I told you already. Okay. No vegetables on the ferry. The ticket lady says. So he playing I told innocent. You already. I told you already. This is not the first time he's tried smuggling cabbage slugs into Ba Sing Se. Ooh. And when he tried to enter Omashu, listen to why the guards rejected him. Rotten cabbages? What kind of slum do you think this is? Rotten. Cabbages. cabbages. I think the cabbage man was once again trying to sneak in infested cabbages into Omashu. And you know what? Cabbage slugs. I think this time he actually succeeded. Despite being rejected and having his cabbage cart completely destroyed, just a few minutes later we see him inside of the city with a whole new oh, cart. Oh yeah, there we go. He's working for Fire Nation. <laughs> My cabbages. Man, we could buy some more cabbage. It's like $10, bro. Like what? Did he just find a spare cart full of cabbages somewhere? No, I actually think these are the same cabbages. We know from Return to Omashu that there is a secret sewer entrance into the city beneath the gate. A secret okay. passage? Which is exactly where the merchant's cabbages were thrown. Oh. 
But when they had spilled out, so though... I think the Cabbage Man went down there to retrieve his cabbages, discover the secret entrance, and successfully brought the infested Bro, cabbages cabbage. into okay. the city to weaken it that for makes the sense. Fire Nation. And you know what's That's really a lot, crazy though. about this? It worked. The next time we see Omashu, it's been conquered by the Fire Nation. The Earth Kingdom city of Om... Oh, ho, ho. They even make a point to tell us how surprising this is and how Omashu had never been conquered for the entire Hundred Year War. I can't believe it. I know the war has spread far, but Omashu always seemed untouchable. Up until now, it was. So, why is it now suddenly so vulnerable? It's because of the cabbage merchant. Yeah, it didn't hear I hear also slick. exactly what happened to Ba Sing Se. He was rejected entry, his cabbages got destroyed, but then later we see him inside of the city with cabbages. My cab <laughs> what did he take the fucking serpent's pass? And then shortly after he arrives and starts selling his cabbages, the city gets conquered by the Fire Nation. Hmm. hmm. I'm starting to notice maybe a little a little pattern here. You can't deny it anymore. There's there's too many connections. The cabbage merchant is working for the Fire Nation to help take down the Earth Kingdom and spy on the Avatar. And speaking of which, how exactly is the cabbage merchant spying on the gang? Like, obviously they've bumped into each other a couple times, but Zuko and the Ember Island players have a ton of information about the gang. Here's what you missed. We went to the Fire Nation, and you got better, and I got a sword, and I think Combustion Man died. Like, way more than Dang, anyone should have. Dang, why the hell no my man ain't like this? like there's something else going on here. And if you don't believe me, I reached out to a certified Avatar expert to see okay. if there's any more examples of the Fire Nation knowing things they shouldn't. Right, so like in book three, when everyone thinks Aang is dead, how does Zuko's assassin combustion man keep finding them? It couldn't have just been dumb luck three times in eight episodes that he was just around, right? Seems unlikely. And how'd they know to he put actually Tom in a talking to somebody anyway? and work with Avatar? And collect a reward. Then you metal bend yourself out of jail. Hey, what kind of cell is this? A wooden one. If you think about it, no one in the Fire Nation should know that metal bending exists. Toph only created it a few weeks ago, and the only people that have seen it are from the Earth Kingdom, and the Fire Nation troops mm. aboard that ship who were probably just horribly, horribly killed by the serpent. And Toph never uses metal bending in her scams in that episode, only earth bending. So why in the world would the Fire Nation town guards think they use a wooden cell when they're not even aware that metal bending is a thing? Thank you, Mr. Overanalyzing Avatar. Okay. So, how could the Fire Nation possibly know all of this? Especially the stuff in Book 3 when the Cabbage Merchant isn't even around. It's almost like the Fire Nation has another way to spy on the gang. A way that still involves the Cabbage Merchant, even if he isn't nearby. Okay, here's where my theory goes what, into he full a wire? On tinfoil hat conspiracy mode, so just brace yourself. There's a really strange detail in the episode, The Puppet Master, an episode that the okay. Cabbage Merchant isn't even in. But still, I honestly think it's one of the strangest things in the entire show. In this episode, the gang goes to a Fire Nation market and Katara buys a cabbage. Okay. Except there's something very weird about this cabbage. It clearly has a Ooh, very creepy looking- That ain't his face, is it? Some ugly old white dude, hey, bruh. Face on it. Put that face like, down. Huh? I swear, this is actually in the show. I, I did not edit this in. It's never even acknowledged in the episode. It's just a weird, creepy face watching the characters for no reason. Why in the world would the animators include this? Ah, uh, so this weird. nigga's smart, bruh. I ain't gonna lie. Okay. So I have a theory. But okay. what I'm about to say is gonna sound completely insane. It's probably the stupidest possible thing I could say, but what if the Cabbage Merchant is using the cabbages to spy on the gang? Yes, I believe that the Cabbage Merchant is a cabbage bender. Oh. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, don't, don't go. Okay. I, I know that sounds stupid, but I swear it makes sense. Just, just, just hear me out. Okay. In this show, there is a, cabbage a precedent bender? for being able to spy on people through vegetation with the swamp. I think I know how to find them. Everything is connected. Come on, we gotta hurry. 
And it isn't even just like an avatar power either. Toph can use the swamp vines to literally see the entire world. I'm more connected to the world than you've ever been. I can see Sue and Lin, Zaldu okay. and Republic City. This is I Toph see right here. Everything. Now, obviously, this cabbage is not part of the swamp. But Thanks. a major theme of Avatar is how separation is just an illusion and everything is connected. I get how the tree is one big thing, but the whole world? Sure. You think you're any different from me or your friends or this tree? The greatest illusion of this okay. world is the illusion of separation. Things you think are separate and different are actually the one same. and the same. Even the separation of the four elements is an illusion. We're all connected. Everything is connected. So everything in this world, including the cabbage merchant and cabbages across the entire world, are connected. connected. And I think the merchant is somehow tapping into this connection to spy on the gang. I think, like, technically you could do this with anything in Avatar. He's just, like, really honed his ability on cabbages. He's cabbage bending, and I have evidence to prove it. This okay. weird spiritual connection to cabbages explains why he's so obsessive and protective of them. Off with their heads! One for each head of yeah, cabbage! Yeah, taking somebody's head off for a cabbage? He's constantly feeling them for some reason. <laughs> he's not just randomly caressing a cabbage, he's connecting with it through cabbage bending. And if you don't believe me, one time while he's feeling a cabbage, we can see him literally sense the gang coming. <gasps> oh! Like, yeah, there was a falling sound, but if you listen closely, he senses them before we can hear the sound. Yeah. He sensed them right there. <gasps> he okay. sensed them through the cabbage. This also explains how he would have been able to find the secret entrance into Omashu. His cabbages fell down near the entrance, allowing him to sense it. I, I know it sounds Ooh, crazy, but the so he is the here. cabbages. The cabbage merchant is cabbage bending. Every time we see cabbages in this show, the merchant is using them to spy on the gang. Oh, he is okay. always watching them. He's not just some random, funny background character. He is a highly skilled double agent working for the Fire Nation. And if you still, after all of this, don't believe that, then let me ask you this. How did a failing cabbage merchant get enough money to start an extremely successful technology company in the Legend of Korra? What? Republic City is trusted. Bruh, <laughs> he, he serving, he got the cabbage trap out here. You know what I'm saying? He trapping out the cabbage workshop, bro. Selling it to everybody. In the, you know what I'm saying? Hey, that's crazy, man. Thing that's crazy. For over 50 years. No! Corp. They even what? built a massive statue of him in Republic City. They don't just hand these out. Not even Katara got a statue. Thanks. The cabbage merchant built his empire with blood money he was paid by the Fire Nation to take down the Earth Kingdom. And he has gone on to become one of, if not the most rich and powerful people in all of Avatar. Hmm. All right, there you go. Bet you didn't expect the My Cabbages guy to be the true villain of the show. Sure you know, at, at least he doesn't seem to be doing it anymore. In fact, in Legend of Korra, his company is actually the main supplier of airships for the Earth Kingdom now. So, you know, it seems like mm. he's gotten over his grudge. Maybe this is even his way of know, trying man. to make up for all the damage he's done to I the Earth Kingdom. I wouldn't trust what he you know, airships maybe this story ships actually off. has a happy ending after all. Don't worry, I have a plan. These airships that Cabbage Corp sold to the Earth Kingdom are way cheaper than the ones Future Industries built. Now okay. that's just shoddy workmanship. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's still fucking doing it. The controls are busted. It's not my fault this airship's a hunk of junk. Even generations later, the cabbage merchant is still secretly weakening the Earth Kingdom. I knew it. I knew <laughs> it. Why? Is he still working for Bro, the Fire Nation? Are you still Nation? big man like, this no, long? No, no, he can't be. In Legend of Korra, the Earth Kingdom and the Fire Nation are not enemies anymore. The new Fire Lord is even like super against the idea of fighting the Earth Kingdom. The Fire Nation has spent too much of its history fighting nonsense wars. And I refuse to drag my nation into another one unless there's no other choice. Why? 
why is the cabbage merchant still doing this? Who is he working for? Oh my god. It's so obvious. How did I miss this? The cabbage merchant is a member of the Red Lotus. The Red Lotus is an anarchist organization from Legend of Korra Book 3. And we're told that there are more Red Lotus spies out there, even though we never actually end up seeing them. And even with Sahir locked up again, we still don't know how many Red Lotus members might be out there mm. hiding. Hmm, that, that kind of sounds familiar. They hate governments and secretly oh, took okay. down the Earth Kingdom from within. Hmm. You know, that that actually kind of reminds me of someone. They hate the Avatar and even tried to kill her. Now, destroy the Avatar! Off with their heads! One for each head of cabbage! And each member of the Red Lotus is a highly unique and specialized bender. Uh, uh, cabbage bending! No, no, that that's crazy! <laughs> he can't be! He's not an anarchist, he's just the funny cabbage guy! <laughs> <laughs> the Red Lotus is a group that originally split off from the White Lotus. We are what the White Lotus okay. was meant to be. But after the Hundred Year War, the White Lotus lost its true purpose. True purpose. Its members came out of hiding and openly served the Avatar. And you know, you'd probably think that if they're just like the White Lotus, but more extreme, their logo would probably be just a red version of the White Lotus's logo. But yeah. no. They did a full-on redesign. It doesn't even look like a lotus flower anymore. But you know what it does look like? <laughs> a fucking cabbage! Cabbage! It's a fucking oh. red cabbage! You can't what? keep getting away with this! <laughs> Whoa! Okay, bye. Thanks for watching my funny ah, cabbage video. Ah, see you gonna do that. Goodbye. I think I might have really fucked up my voice on this one. Nah, that ain't it. Uh, yeah, that's my theory. Thanks again to Overanalyzing Avatar Bro, for helping out theory. with this theory. It that guy done. has like an encyclopedic knowledge of this show, so so go check it him out. It ain't done. I know. An Avatar? What are you talking about? That I keep talking about. I know you guys have been waiting a long time for it. A part of my channel. But if you want an Earth be Cabbage done. Theory, thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Can't be done. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot one last thing. This mouse is also a Fire Nation spy. In book one, there's a scene where Iroh is just like chilling in the Earth Kingdom. And then okay. a random mouse comes a up to him and straight Six up nine? warns him about the Earth Kingdom soldiers coming. Who's there? You startled me, little one. But it was this a ugly very little rat. Nap. Oh, ho, ho. Like, there is no other way to interpret this. This mouse was 100% right. And then, six episodes later, Momo brings Katara a mouse that looks exactly the same. <laughs> Bruh. The mouse was spying on the gang. Momo just saved their lives. That was a fucking Fire Nation spy mouse. Whoa. Store little strikes again, man. No cap, man. Y'all hit that light. Hit that saw, man. You know what I'm saying? You want us to continue SpongeBob? You better spam that like on this video and the one about the SpongeBob theory. And we'll do the whole thing, man. You better spam it. We need 200 likes on that video, man. Pronto, 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 man. Hit that like, hit that sub, man. If you watch this full video, man, right now, basketball, it's the fat red guy, man. I'm signing out. You guys have a wonderful day.